All right, so we have our machine set up. We're ready to install .NET, and those are the next steps. So this video will cover the following. We're gonna install .NET Core on the AWS Linux system that we set up. We're gonna configure Apache to work with Kestrel. We're gonna move our files up there um, after we build. And we're gonna transfer that up to uh, Linux using WinSCP. We'll show you how to use that tool. And then we'll run the application in AWS and then we'll test it using Postman. So let's get going. Two web pages that will be useful for you as you go through this. There's a page out there called Prerequisites for .NET Core on Linux from Microsoft. And if you'll scroll down here to the section on CentOS, which is the version of Linux that we're doing, we're gonna follow along with this. Make sure that you're using the .NET Core 2X instructions and not the um, and not the 1X. So we'll connect to our machine using PuTTY. Uh, just note that your IP address may have changed. So before you connect, go to the Amazon console and highlight your machine and just check that IP address and you can copy that and update PuTTY's configuration. So we'll uh, save that. And then we will go ahead and open that. And let me kill this. And we're going to restart with a better font so you can see. So let's look at our appearance and go to a larger font. Let's load this and then set the appearance to the larger font and then go back and save it. And that'll make sure that every time I connect it uses that larger font. All right, so this is better. Hopefully you can see this okay on the video. All right, so going back over to our web page. So um, what it wants us to do first is get a signature key. And in PuTTY to copy something that you've pasted from Windows, just right click and then hitting enter will execute the command. This next one is really long, and so we're just going to copy and paste this entire thing. So all I'm doing is copying the commands from the web page, pasting them into, into the terminal session and executing them. Okay, now we're installing the .NET Core SDK. Before we do that, we're doing an update just of everything on the operating system. So we'll let it go through and do some updates here. And while it's doing that we can grab our next command which is this it's installing a few libraries that are needed to support .NET, .NET Core. So sometimes it can take a minute or so to install, or longer, depending on what it is that it's installing. Okay, so that's done. Now we'll install these. Just say yes on these, and it's installed those. And finally, we'll do this. Now, before we do this command, I want to caution you. Oops. So this is the command we're going to do. However, make sure that you go to Windows or the Mac or the other Linux machine or wherever you're building this and check your .NET version by typing .NET dash dash version. So I'm running 2.1.2 and so I'm going to be deploying an application that I've built under Windows using 2.1.2 so I should install on Linux 212. 
So I've changed the version number from 200 or 200 to 212. And we'll let it go ahead and do that. Now the next thing I want you to do is export your path. I've found that that's not necessary. Um, it seems to work fine without that. But you can go ahead and do that. And then we're going to check the version once it gets done installing up on Linux to make sure that we have the same version on both sides. On both the Windows machine and over on the Linux machine. I'm going to pause this because it can take a minute or so to install. Okay, so it's finished that. So I should be able to type .NET dash dash version just like I did under Windows and it can't, comes back with 212. So we've successfully installed .NET. Now, the next thing we need to do is install Apache, which is this a web server that's used under Linux. It's used in um, many applications use Apache. There's other web servers you could use. Remember that Kestrel is a cross-platform web server that installs as part of .NET Core, but um, the Linux machine doesn't know how to route external traffic to that web server. So there's another web page out there called Set Up a Hosting Environment for ASP.NET Core on Linux with Apache and Deploy to it. And so we're going to follow those directions, and you'll notice these are specific to CentOS 7. The first thing we do, however, is go back to Windows and install and um, actually publish our application. And in my case, I'm going to just have a folder created called AWS Site, and I'm just going to issue the command .NET publish o AWS Site, and this is in the folder. Let me just show you. This is in the folder where my solution file is. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that. It's going to do a restore and then it'll build this locally. Now if I go into the project folder, there should be a AWS site folder. And here's all these files. We're going to be transferring those files up to the server, to the Linux box. So we have that ready to go. The published application, it says, then has to be copied to the server using SCP. So we're going to use WinSCP, and I'll show you how to use that. Another free utility like PuTTY. And the nice thing about WinSCP is it works closely with PuTTY. And Again, check your IP address. Ours is right here. You can set up your configuration with EC2 user. We're using a certificate, so if I log in here, it's going to give me the warning and it's going to ask me for the passphrase for the key just like it does when we connect on putty and so now on the left is are my windows files and um, so here's my folder that I was just looking at and in AWS site this is these are the files we need to transfer and here's my home directory on Linux and so what I'm going to do is create a new directory and I'm going to call it core rest server. I'm going to move to that folder and I'm going to copy all of these files. I'm not making any changes to these files. Just drag and drop. And it's going to go through and copy all those files up to the Linux box. And now those files are all, are, are all there and ready to go. So going back to our instructions here. So now what we have to do is configure a proxy server. So the way this works is that the request is going to hit Linux, uh, the Linux Apache web server, and it's going to turn around and route it to the internal Kestrel server running under .NET Core. So we have to make sure Apache is installed first. 
So we're going to go through a yum update again. So we'll go ahead and do that. The dash Y simply makes it so you don't have to answer a prompt. We, it's important that you do these. This will install Apache and also this mod SSL library that we need. So it's going to go through and install all of that. Now we need to set a configuration file. And here's how we're going to do this. You need to go to the ETC or Etsy folder. So cd slash etsy, cd, cd httpd, that's the Apache folder. And if we look at the files in there, we want to go into this folder called confd. And we want to create a new configuration file for our application. So we say sudo vi. Now it doesn't have to be called core rest server, but I like to call it the same thing as the application that I'm configuring this for. And you'll notice I have .conf on the end, and I'm using sudo to make sure that I can write the file. And this is exactly what needs to be in that file. So I'm going to copy that. Hit the insert key. Paste all of that information. And do a little alignment here just to fix this. So you could go through and type all this. But I found that I make mistakes when I type this. There's a fair amount of exactness. Well, there's a it's all exact. It all has to be exact for it to work properly. And what you'll notice here is the routing that's happening. So it, it says, give me everything that comes in on our root HTTP and route it over to this. And this is going to be where our .NET application is going to be running, 127.0.0.1 on port 5000. Okay. All right, so we have our configuration. Now what we want to do is this command right here, which will test that configuration and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. I can close WinSCP, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Going back to PuTTY. This config test will test that configuration. And it says syntax OK. If you get something other than syntax OK, you've made a mistake, you've made a typo, you need to go fix that. Then we'll follow these commands by restarting Apache. And you can call this command to do the enable. And I'll do this, sudo service httpd status. That just tells me, is it up and running? And you'll notice down here it says it started Apache. All right, so we have the Apache web server configured to route to Kestrel. We have our .NET application moved up. We've installed .NET. Now we're ready to actually run our application. So I'm going to go back to my home folder by just simply typing CD. And I'm going to change to the core rest server folder, which is where we copied all those files. And I'm simply going to say .NET core rest server dot dll so that's actually the name of the main application right here that this file that we transferred up so this will allow the application to run so you'll notice right here it says it's now listening on localhost 5000 the application is started press control c to shut down so our dotnet application is running and what I'm going to do before I test this from Postman is just see if it's working on the Linux box. So I'm going to start another PuTTY session to the same machine. And I'm going to use something called the curl command. It's a utility that lets me test HTTP requests. 
So I'm going to just run local host colon 5000 slash API slash values. You'll remember there's two endpoints uh, for the address labels and for the values controller. The values controller doesn't have any authentication on it. It doesn't hit the database. It just simply returns two values. And you see those two values returned right here, value one and value two. So our server's running okay locally. I'm gonna go ahead and kill this session. Let's go grab that IP address again. So I'm gonna to have to use this in Postman. Jump over to Postman. Now, I'm on my Windows machine. I'm calling the, I'm calling the uh, Amazon, I'm, I'm um, specifying the, a the values API controller from the Amazon AWS Linux machine. You'll notice I don't have to put colon 5000 on here. In fact, you don't want to do that because Apache is responding on port 80. So you don't need to put, um, you don't need to put colon 5000. It routes that internally. That was what that virtual host configuration file was. So I'll just go ahead and send this request and it comes back with our values. So our AWS web server uh, running dot, our .NET core application, our core REST server application is running up in Amazon now. And you can monitor and watch what it's doing by going to your web browser, selecting the machine and hitting monitoring. And you'll see the request that we just went through here. The network packets in and out and um, it's up and running there. So uh, we've done everything that we said we were going to do. We have it all running up there. And the next thing we'll do is figure out how to get our databases running up in Amazon and connect to them from this .NET web server. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like our videos uh, using the like option in YouTube. Please let me know if you have any other questions about anything that we've covered so far and we'll move on to other using .NET uh, in other parts of AWS web services.